Welcome to the Characteristics of Living Things video lesson. In this lesson, we'll be highlighting the eight characteristics all living things have in common and showing a brief video clip to go with each characteristic. Let's go ahead and get started. The first characteristic of living things is that all living things are made up of cells. Cells are the smallest units considered fully alive. Cells can grow, respond to their surroundings, and reproduce. Even though cells are small, they are complex and very organized. Let's take a look at this cute little wrap somebody made up about animal and plant cells. Hopefully you enjoyed that little ditty. Our second characteristic all living things have in common is that living things are based on a universal genetic code. All organisms store information they need to live, grow, and reproduce in a genetic code written in a molecule, molecule called DNA. That information is copied and passed from parent to offspring. With only a few small differences, life's genetic code is almost the same in every living thing on Earth. Let's take a look at this short video with regards to the DNA genetic molecule. DNA, DNA contains two strands of called nucleotides, arranged like a spiral staircase. Each nucleotide includes three parts, a phosphate group, a sugar molecule, and one of four bases, adenine, guanine, cytosine, or thymine. The sugar phosphate bonds form the double backbone of the molecule, the handrails of the staircase. But we find the genetic key to DNA in the steps of this stairway, the nitrogen-containing bases. These bases link up using hydrogen bonds in a very specific way. Adenine will bond only with thymine, A to T. Cytosine only bonds with guanine, C to G. While these basic pairings never change, the order of the pairs along each strand varies greatly from one species to the next. In this elegant design, we see how nature stores the instructions to build all living things. The third characteristic all living things have in common is that living things get and use material and energy. All living things must take in materials and energy to grow, develop, and reproduce. The chemical reactions through which a living thing builds up or breaks down materials are called metabolism. Let's take a look at this brief video segment on the concept of metabolism. Let's talk about something called metabolism. I remember the sum total of all of the chemical reactions in the body, in the but I never actually knew what that meant. So I like to think of metabolism, metabolism. It's kind of like it's kind the balance, of balance in the body, in the body. Between, between the reactions, the reactions that, that 
reaction, reaction that builds things up. Things up. And another way and of another way saying of that saying that is is anabolism. Anabolism. And and on the other side of the, the scale, side of the, the reaction that the reaction breaks things down. Break things down. And the medical way of the saying medical that way of saying that is catabolism. Is catabolism. Or catabolism. Or Metabolism, metabolism is kind of the balance kind of the between, balance between building things up, building or, things repairing up or repairing or storing inside the body, inside and, the body and down usually for, down for, energy needs. for energy needs. The fourth characteristic all living things have in common is that living things grow and develop. Every organism has a certain pattern of growth and development. During development, a single fertilized egg divides again and again. All these cells divide, they differentiate, which means they begin to look different from one another and to do different jobs. Take a look at this neat video clip on radish seeds sprouting and developing. <laughs> The fifth characteristic all living things have in common is that living things reproduce. All living things make new similar living things. Most plants and animals engage in what is called sexual reproduction. In sexual reproduction, cells from two parents come together to form the first cell of a new living thing. Other living things reproduce through asexual reproduction in which a single living thing makes offspring exactly the same as itself. The next video clip we're going to take a look at is the sperm meeting up with an egg in sexual reproduction. <laughs> I bet you didn't expect that to be a jewelry commercial. I know I sure didn't. The next video clip you're going to take a look at is a yeast cell undergoing asexual reproduction. Notice how the single yeast cell becomes two yeast cells, simply dividing and producing more of itself. The sixth characteristic all living things have in common is that living things respond to their environment. Organisms notice and react to stimuli from their environment. A stimulus is a signal to which a living thing reacts. In this next video that you'll take a look at, notice how the plant responds to being touched. <coughs> The seventh characteristic all living things have in common is that living things maintain a stable internal environment. 
All living things need to keep conditions inside themselves as constant as possible, even when conditions outside them change. When conditions inside organisms are kept within certain limits, this is called homeostasis. Watch this next video segment on the scientist talking about maintaining homeostasis. Another of the hallmarks of life is that all life requires energy and has metabolism. Another of the, the term metabolism refers to all the chemical reactions going on inside a cell. The, term the goal of metabolism for living things is to maintain homeostasis, which means steady state. In other words, cells must maintain a stable internal environment to survive. When a cell's homeostasis is altered, the cell does not function properly. As the textbook states, you and all other organisms keep conditions in the internal environment within a range that favors cell survival. When we get sick with the flu, for example, or suffer from fever, the internal environments of some of our cells are not in homeostasis. Maintaining homeostasis requires energy. Thus, homeostasis, energy, and metabolism are three important defining features of life. Chapter 4 describes energy and metabolism, whereas Chapter 5 describes two biological processes, photosynthesis, a process that captures energy for cells, and two, cell respiration, a process that allows that energy to be released by the cell. Without photosynthesis and cell respiration, life on Earth would not exist as we know it. The eighth and final characteristic that all living things have in common is that living things change over time. Another way to say that is that they evolve. Over generations, group of living things evolve or change over time. Evolutionary change links all forms of life to a common origin more than 3.5 billion years ago. Evidence of this shared history is found in all parts of living things and fossils, from body parts to proteins to information and DNA. Check out this last video segment on bacteria evolving ways to move in a very short amount of time. The bacteria in this first clip may look like they are moving, but they are only floating around in the liquid. The this strain is unable to act like and swim moving, because it has lost a regulated gene needed to produce flagella. This will tell us the propel bacteria through liquid. Needed to produce flagella. Little tails that propel bacteria through liquid. Evolution comes to the rescue, and it only takes two steps. Step one, you can see a few of the bacteria are now able to swim well because they have acquired a single mutation in a different regulator that allows them to make the gel. Step two, you can see many more are now swimming around and have regained the ability to make the Step two, you can see many more are now swimming around and have regained the ability to make Evolution can rewire regulatory networks in just a few repeatable mutational steps. can rewire regulatory networks. That'll do it for our lesson on characteristics of living things. Hopefully this has been informative and you'll have more practice with this in our next class as you look at applying this information to other biological situations.